Hey, so today we're going to talk about, should we put server configs within Laravel? Many of you are probably thinking, what the heck? We're so used to when a developer needs to upgrade a version of Redis or Predis that we need to go to the sysadmin and manually update all three different environments. Maybe you're using some sort of configuration management tool that can do it. And then we have to repeat the process when the developer updates a version of DOM PDF that needs a new version of image magic. Uh, that's how we deploy everything. Now, in a more modern approach, what we're actually doing is we're bringing the developer and the sysadmin together, which some of you may have some different feelings on. But in this approach, what we can do is with the power of Docker and using Laravel all within the same repository, we can manage our entire stack. So you can see that we have Ubuntu, MariaDB, we have Redis, we have ImageMagick. And what this allows us to do is that when we start off with a project on main, and let's say that that is just our staging.example.com, and we need to go through the task of upgrading a PDF process. And let's say that process needs a new version of DOM PDF, we can deploy that together within that branch. So this is going to be DOM PDF 2, and then we have Image Magic 7. And then in realistic world, we're going to want that uh, Redis upgrade. That's probably going to be somebody else's task. And you can see when we deploy these, we have different preview branches, which is really cool. So we can take them based off the PR number. And let's say in this branch, we're just going to upgrade our Redis version from version one, and, and maybe we need to upgrade that to version seven. And now they're totally separate. But when we merge things in, so we bring that into main, we still have our final source of truth for testing. And then the team that's working on the Redis upgrade, they still have their internal testing environment here. We can pull those changes from main into Redis. That team can finalize their testing here. And then once that's approved, we can merge that into main for one final round of testing to make sure everything works together. And then we can create a release and deploy that out to production. Now, this is really cool stuff, but there's a few things to watch out for, especially with things like secret management. You don't want to, since you're exposing yourself a little bit more of having these more sensitive configurations, you want to make sure that you're properly managing that. It all just depends on your team and how many people are interacting and who's responsible for what and who should have access. And when you start getting into this stuff, it's very easy to complicate CI processes in general. So the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you're staying focused on is that the time that you're investing is supposed to return the time of savings. And so make sure that you're solving problems one thing at a time and making sure that they're actual problems and that you're not overcomplicating things. So how do we do this? The way that I organize our infrastructure configuration is I just have a dot infrastructure folder within my Laravel root. And then I, I follow this high level down to the detail, I call it. I try to visualize like a triangle, right? So as we kind of scale down, as we're narrowing down, I break it into two different areas. There's configuration, so I just call it conf. And then that allows me to scale down to where I get into services and services may have different configurations based off the environments. And then I finally actually get to the configuration file down below. Now, when it comes to the volume data, this is quite interesting because we don't want anything in here to be committed. So when we actually mount this folder into the Docker container, we're going to just use a git ignore that makes sure that this folder is created, but then anything else in here is going to be at least on a development machine, just local to that machine only. And when I get to production, I actually use Docker volumes and don't use uh, mounted folders like this. So let me show you what this looks like on the left hand side. You can see, I just have a standard Laravel install and everything highlighted in yellow is basically my infrastructure configurations here, just for simplicity's sake. And the number one thing we do is use Docker Compose override. So we can use this base Docker Compose file, but then 
append things to it based on the environment. So you can see I have CI, dev, and prod. And what's really helpful in this, this allows us to branch off of main, and then we can test, maybe we want to bunt MariaDB to 10.11. And now we can do those changes and test those specifically in one branch before we merge them back into our main environment before an actual release, you know, things like that. But in development, there are certain configurations that differ. Mainly, there are going to be things of we want to just use something local. Like here, I have spin.dev.test is, is my local environment. And we also want to test with HTTPS. So we just include just a basic uh, generic configuration. So you can see underneath here, infrastructure config. We go into traffic. And we have two different things here. We have dev. We have prod. And in development, we just provide the certificates. They're just going to be local. They don't need to be secure. But when we get into production, we may want to use things like Let's Encrypt or do Cloudflare, things like that. So this allows us to, when we're in, in production mode, provide different configuration files, but everything is all version controlled and stored within the repository itself. Then we also have two, is that when we get to this Docker Compose, you can see that I have this build with a context of this current directory to look for a Docker file. And we have this target called base, and this is a multi-stage build. And so we say, okay, use our base image. This is our open source image. It's available on GitHub saying, okay, we want to run PHP version 8.2. And we're using the variation with PHP FPM and Nginx. And then it just says as base. So development, we're stopping here. And then when we look in development, we're actually going to, let's see if I can find, there it is, the PHP container. We have the current working directory, basically this whole directory, be accessible at var www.html within the container itself. And so this allows the developers so that they can hit command S, save the change, and it will appear over here on the right hand side of the screen. But in production, we look at that Docker file. We actually want to copy all of this stuff over here and put that into the image itself. And then we can take that image based off the git commit SHA, which now gives us point in time of every change that we've made. But we can also guarantee that when we distribute this out to either just one server or many servers, they're guaranteed to get the exact same version across everything. And then you do the git SHA so that if there is a failure, you can roll back to the SHA from before, and then you don't have as big of a dumpster fire to deal with. So those are the most important things of where you can now start to see the configuration of everything. You can branch things, you can spin up as many environments as you want, and everything comes down to the single source of truth from within your Git repo. And when you're looking at certain things of from a development perspective, not only can the sysadmin just say, hey, I'm pushing this config out and developers really don't need to worry about configuring their local development environment because the sysadmin can just easily push that out. Another major thing here is the volume data for local developers. You can see this is all of my actual Laravel uh, database that's created here within MariaDB. So what's really nice too is from a developer perspective, if they go buy a new computer, you literally just grab this folder, drag it over to your new computer and everything's up and running. So I hope you found this video helpful. You can find me at JD Rogers on Twitter and GitHub. I love to answer questions about CI processes, Docker. I'm working on this project called Spin, which is what we have here. Let me just do a quick demo of that. We can just do a quick spin up. And what this project does is it allows developers to just have a very simple uh, user experience with working with things like this. So it's all based off of Docker Compose. They can spin up their own environment. They can come over here and just press Control C. It's very similar to Laravel Sail, but what I'm working on is actually extending this out to where Spin will be able to manage not only your local development, but all the way up to production as well. So if you have any questions, please hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.